I spoke with a marine neuroscientist who says that even with these whales living within a net, having a perimeter, that that kind of life is so much different than living in a tank. Oh yeah, here we go, dive in. Woo! It's a feeling familiar to many in the Pacific Northwest. Look, it just spouted. <gasps> oh my God, babe. The jump in your heart at seeing a whale in the wild. My whole life is made, I can die now. A far cry from the traumatic reaction felt at seeing that freedom removed. It's like nothing you've ever experienced before. Advocates like Amy Simon hope to return that sense of wild ocean to whales. They have their own self their own being and they can do and spend their day how they want to, opposed to being exploited and being rid on and neglected. Simon is a native of Sherbrooke, Nova Scotia, where the nonprofit Whale Sanctuary Project is building a refuge for marine mammals. She was inspired to help as a child after seeing a whale working as a tourist attraction. People were in the water with her and touching her and she got to become aggressive because they don't like that. That really got my head around about how whales are treated. But it isn't just a matter of the heart. It's one of the mind, says marine neuroscientist Lori Marino. Well, I've studied their brains for over 30 years now. Everyone knows that these are very intelligent, complex beings. When you look at their brain, you realize that it has a number of characteristics that are even more elaborated than the human brain. And what they do in their everyday lives, you see a lot of complexity there. She says that complexity craves bonding, social connection, and culture, something seen regularly in southern resident pods. Orcas, for instance, live uh, their whole lives in family groups. They live in pods. Some of the males, for instance, uh, stay with their moms their whole life. They're the ultimate mama's boys. Marino says orcas can't get that group interaction or use their brains to their full potential in a confined environment. They show behavioral stereotypies, which indicate that there's something going on in the brain. They're not developing correctly and they're hyper aggressive. All the common signs of psychopathology are found in captive orcas, indicating that they cannot thrive in these uh, facilities. Her research shows the lack of stimulation in a tank can lead to higher stress hormones, contributing to neurodegeneration and causing animals to develop learned helplessness. That helplessness is why, for now, many are advocating for sanctuaries that set aside large amounts of space so whales can live as naturally as possible with safeguards in place. And so sanctuary is really the best of both worlds. We're feeding them. We still have 24-7 veterinary care. But they're in an environment that is actually natural, and they can interact with a natural world and do what they want on a daily basis. The progress means hope for many. The project notes that not every site billing itself as a sanctuary really is one. They say in order to truly provide sanctuary, there needs to be one priority and one priority only, the safety and care of the animals. Reporting in Nova Scotia, Erica Zucco, King 5 News.